College prep, just a few bucks south of here, and I um I want to make a little presentation about map making in the digital age because I found a really good um, click of international um, map enthusiasts my age and uh, just give a little glimpse into that space. So uh, I'll start this. Off. All right, so I'll open this with a story about a little town called Saint Brian. Now Saint Brian is a little city in the Great Plains. Um, I don't know if I can tell it a city really. It's like about a thousand people, but um. I go there whenever I, uh, you know, I've made a few vacations out there. My parents have been there a few times. Um, but, you know, sometimes I go with friends, but sometimes, you know, I uh, once I learned to drive, you know, I <laughs> went out there. Um, I go out there to clear my head. Um, but so St. Brian, uh, the interesting thing about it, it's a very small city, but what it makes, what it lacks in size, um, it makes up for in culture. Now, it's a city with lots of history. It used to be a Portuguese colony, actually. Um, in the Great Plains, which might sound a little strange. You might not have heard of it, but um, it was founded by an enterprising explorer called Tiago da Silva um, as the colony of São Borromeu, uh, and was later changed to St. Brian after a wave of uh, Britons immigrated to the periphery of the city. Now, I think the strangest thing about St. Brian uh, is that none of it's real. However, <laughs> it looks like this. Now, you may be wondering, what, uh, what in the heck is this? And I will tell you up front, it is a video game. It is called Minecraft. Um, you may have heard of it. No, uh, so a few years ago, right, um, a few friends and I, um, I'll get to those friends later, because they're really who this presentation is about. But uh, we, me and a few cartography enthusiasts, we began laying out um, these, I'll get to those in a bit, but these diagrams, right, of a fictional city called St. Brian that we all collaborated on. And it gave us rich history of um, these, these parishes. So it was organized into like local parishes and the entire city, you know, the city government was actually organized like a anarchic Christian democratic confederation. It was, it was as, very much as esoteric as possible, but um, we, uh, we collaborated on all these maps and all these, you know, so here's some views and uh, we eventually mocked it up in the game Minecraft, which is a uh, video game, again, you might have heard of it, but it's a, you know, just, Collaborative, creative video game, you gather resources, build up a, you know, build whatever you want, right? That's kind of the premise of the game. So we decided, what if we use this tool, right? You know, kind of like Lego, what if we all come together and build this virtual city? Because even though we all live thousands of miles away, we can all be in St. Brian together, right? This is a quaint knock parish. We chose that name because it was the name of a city in New Jersey that I thought sounded funny. Um, this is the township of Bosshead, which is the, you know, uh, Protestant Britons came and there was some cultural conflict with them and you know the Catholic Portuguese colonists and there's the colony of Passaic which is it's hilly geography made you know shipping difficult uh, made shipping difficult but you know it all came together and it's all just some silly video game but you know we, we spent a fair amount of time on it you know and had a, quite a bit of fun now that said let me get into the people that worked on this because they've done more impressive things than this um, I want to tell you a story about a community called Maps, Flags, and Alternate History. Um, that's their logo, right? Now, Maps, Flags, and Alternate History is a Discord server. Now, it's uh, Discord. Um, if you've ever heard of Skype, you know, if you've never heard of Skype, you know, it's fine. It's like a texting program, right? That's, that's all it really is. It's a text application um, open to anyone with an internet connection. And I joined it uh, when I was a little freshman at, you know, in the suburbs, and I was like, yo, you know, I really like this. Uh, map stuff, right? Like, it's really, you know, pretty cool, right? Um, you, you know, I'm sure you all have similar stories. So, <laughs> but, um, I, so I, I joined this Discord uh, thing because, you know, some of my friends at school were using it as like a texting device, and um, I eventually stumbled across some like internet communities about like mapping and uh, that kind of thing. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. Because um, I ended up meeting, um, I've met people from Baghdad, from Buenos Aires, from Bristol, and I still like keep up with them. Like I'm following this kid from Baghdad on Instagram, you know, et cetera. And I've made these this international community of collaborators, of fellow enthusiasts, but like of friends. And it's been like one of the most profound experiences of my life, frankly. I still keep up with these people. You know, we still make all these maps together, and I've seen them progress over these past two, three years into amazing things. So. Let me get into that. I think my case study will be my good friend Alex. Um, he goes by Xituan. He took that namesake because it's the it's the name of a minor, um, I believe, artificial river in northern Alberta, which is where he's from. He's from the suburbs of Edmonton. Um, so he focuses on alternate history scenarios, as do many of my friends. Um, again, I talked about esoteric 
Um, they, people over the internet, I don't know why, but they just get more and more ridiculous because <laughs> making serious maps out of ridiculous things, you know, it gives you a lot to work with. So, let's take like, you know, I'm sure you've heard of alternate history. Oh, what if, you know, America lost the Revolutionary War? What if France didn't exist for whatever reason? What if, um, if the entire human population got teleported to Mars or something? You know, it could be whatever. Um, but they end up, they use tools from paint.net to like GIS software as, you know, was previously discussed, I and uh, so the big one I'll talk about is my friend Alex's. He has a timeline called Tomorrow Country, and that looks like this. This was one of the first maps he made of Tomorrow Country about two years ago, um, when I think he was about my age, actually. He's in his 20s now. He's a University of Alberta student. Um, but this is Tomorrow Country. It's a scenario in which um, after a uh, nuclear war, you know, sort of thing, that part isn't really elaborated on, but what is elaborated on is that there's massive northern sediment into you know, Canada, um, specifically like the Yukon and the Northwest Territories and the Peace River region of northern Alberta and British Columbia. Um, so he you know, worked on this timeline, made this map. Um, this is actually a map of like, governmental freedom in 2068 to North America. So he envisioned uh, a United States in which all of the major cities had been bombed out. Um, mm -hmm. And the rest of the place <laughs> fell into anarchy or totalitarianism, whereas Canada flourished, as he was advised. I mean, just the amount of the sheer detail for this you know, imaginary scenario, I, I found that fascinating, right? That really compelled me. And so what he's gone from this to this. This was made a few months ago, and this is the map that led him to be recognized as the foremost student cartographer in all of North America. One month ago, he presented in Seattle and won the competition for this map of Alberta. Um, again, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so he used that same software that he used to make imaginary maps of imaginary scenarios, and those same tools that he gained from discussing like international politics with me, some little like you know teenager down in Chicago, and you know, people in Baghdad, and people in Bristol, and every, like all these tools have come together, and now he's doing amazing things. He's been keeping up with the premiere of Saskatchewan recently, mm -hmm. about, um, he's been making maps for like, uh, like examining uh, agricultural sustainability in the province, you know, like, but very practical things. Um, he's going amazing places, and he, you know, he's one of my greatest inspirations, and one of my greatest friends, and I'm so grateful to have met him, and. How random is that? He lives in Edmonton, right? I don't know if I'll ever, I don't know if I'll ever meet him in real life, but through playing, I play video games with the guy, and he's off, you know, studying, you know, physical geography in uh, uh, University of Alberta. So here's um, a few other examples. Uh, this, I decided to plug one of my own works. Now again, I'm no um, foremost student cartographer in North America, but uh, just another example. So I, um, I made this map one or two years ago, maybe, um, but just. It's these alternate scenarios, right? Like, I, uh, this was, I think, a future, this is actually Mars, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the Olympus Mons up there, the province of Olympia. And this was an alternate scenario, I keep saying that, but, you yeah. know, a future in which um, an East African Federation came to be, became a world power, and colonized Mars. So this is, a lot of these place names are in Swahili. It's, a, again, just esoteric stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> so whatever gives me an excuse to make a map. Um, and so, Again, I, I, I'm still very much a beginner with these programs. I do this up on my MacBook Pro, but um, these, I, I wouldn't know any of this stuff. You know, I wouldn't, all, so many of these details I learned from this international community of people on the internet, and I'm so grateful for that, and I'm so grateful that the tradition of map making and cartography is still going on today, and I think will still go on, you know? Um, and here's another one. Okay, so again, my own stuff. I will stop the plugging, but this um, I just wanted to elaborate on how this relates to the internet because this um, I made this map. It's a little map of a city that I made in response to user prompts um, on Instagram, which is um, you're probably familiar with Instagram, but it's a social media application. Um, so I actually I put out a poll. I was like, hey, you know, what should I add to this city? Um, I was bored one day. Uber, you know, my school was striking, so I was um, So I was like, oh, I'll make a map because that's you know, that's the thing. Uh, and I made this little town called Cherry Fire. So all of these um, little goofy details, you know, I don't know how many of you can see, but um, oh, Sonia's bananas. My friend Sonia was like, oh, make a banana store. I said, sure. Um, my friend Savannah, you know, was like, oh, make a park. So you know, I put a park on there. Um, and but. Basically, you know, what I'm saying is that mapping, you know, um, has evolved. 
I think, and it continues to evolve because the relationship it has with the internet is really um, fascinating, I think. Um, because we've, this, you know, that map of some city in Minecraft was made with the same software that made this award winning map, right? Um, and you know, these little screenshots of, you know, whatever this is, right? <laughs> there were, this was developed by, you know, people who lived thousands of miles away from each other, and we built them together <laughs> to do beautiful things, and I am, um, yeah, so I'm very grateful for what this community has taught me. And, yeah, thank you very much. Woo!